The Galenti and Curses class frigate is one of my favorite ship designs on EVE Online. It has an aggressive, snub fighter type look to it. This big long thing in the front looks like kind of a, a lance, as if it jousts with other ships. And that's not far from the truth, but this is not a weapon. It jets out like that to put some distance between the ship's sensor gear and the power plant which is near the center front of the ship. This is also an inexpensive Tech 1 frigate that beginner capsuleers can easily equip and fly. The word in cursus is Latin and it means to dash or a collision or perhaps a fast incursion and that's what this ship does best. It's usually a brawler and meant to dash in quickly and put its turrets in single light combat drone to good use. It has bonuses to armor repair amount and turret damage. They are normally fit as an all-in close range brawler. My first extensive solo PvP adventures in EVE were with this ship. With two small armor reppers and a capacitor booster to support the energy load, this ship can outtank any other Tech 1 frigate that isn't a pirate or navy variant, with the possible exception of the Punisher. But with this active tank, you can deceive an enemy into thinking they're winning while keeping them close, and then carefully time your reppers for when they truly are needed. When armed with blasters, it can be one of the most effective short-range brawlers. Obviously, against long-range speedsters, it's very vulnerable. But a good Incursus pilot will not engage or put themselves in a situation where they cannot get in close against kiters, who would be ripped apart up close. This configuration has two major weaknesses, however. One is that without a stasis webifier to slow other ships down, an opponent with an afterburner and slightly better range projection, such as a Tormentor or Rocket Kestrel, can fight just slightly outside the optimal blaster range. And such ships, if it can't destroy the Incursus, may be able to extract themselves from the Warp Scrambler and escape into warp. The other weakness is that the two repair modules are capacitor hungry, so a ship that is equipped with a lot of energy neutralizers, assuming it can stay alive long enough, could eventually drain the capacitor of the ship and leave the Incursus defenseless. As stated in the previous video, I continue with the Triglavian losing streak recovery method. I will lose three of these ships, or achieve six victories before moving on to the next ship, which will be the Imperial Navy Slicer. For the Incursus I would use, there's little one can do about the capacitor problem. But for the damage projection, I decided I would modify my fit a little and replace the blasters with the railguns. This would allow me to apply damage beyond 10 kilometers, while with the blasters the best I could hope for with null ammo is a little bit over 5 kilometers. A slight decrease in damage is the cost, but to use good range tactics and to better apply the damage seems like a fair trade. Plus, at the edge of warp scram range, I could have a hope to escape. Now before I get into the fight breakdowns, I want to let you know that I did have about 7 fights here, but I don't want to show all of them because this video would be really long. These fights take a little longer than I expected, so I'll be showing 2 wins and 1 loss. Now I'm in a faction warfare area of space, so I'm looking around, there's a lot of people in faction warfare low sec that are looking for fights. For example here there's a band apart guy. And there's an EVE University guy, and there's an Atron out there in the Novice Outpost, which is a faction warfare complex being a novice only frigates can get into. Um, so I prepare to go ahead and take that fight, because I figure I may have a pretty good advantage. I'm used to fighting Atrons. I go ahead and swallow a drug, a booster, called Exile, which increases my armor repair amount. I wouldn't call it cheating, I am a pirate after all, so I'm going to take some drugs to give me an advantage. Now on D-Scan, as I approach the site, he's not there anymore. Now I'm outside, um, I decide to go inside where I will wait for him. After all, from local, I can tell there's not a lot of faction warfare people in system, and that means that there's only one reason that he was in this site in the first place, and that was to look for a fight. So I figure if this person does want to fight, they'll come back and look. On D-Scan, there is an Atron at short range, meaning he is probably now outside the gate where I just was. So he's going to come in. At this point, I can't seem to decide whether I want Javelin ammo or any matter ammo loaded, but I did pre-overheat my Warp Scrambler. 
Uh, the Javelin ammo, ammo gives me better turret tracking, uh, but shorter range, slightly higher damage. He's in a Natron. I figure he's going to have high transversal. And look, he shows up. Now, if this Atron is smart, he'll get right on my face with blasters and get a, a really close orbit, so it's hard for me to catch him. But I'm going to want to do a keep it range. And sure enough, he comes in. His initial volley is pretty strong, as you can see, and it cuts into my armor quickly. But I turn on both reppers, and I'm repping like a boss. I get him scrammed, I start hitting him with javelin, but he's actually a little bit too far for me. Uh, I'm not sure if I like this, and my railguns are missing. However, I'm alright! My reppers are still holding. I've got cap with the cap booster, which I just reload. But my railguns are still missing! They're still missing! Um, on the other hand, he's not moving very fast. You can see his velocity is only 695, which tells me either his afterburner isn't on, or he's fit with a micro warp drive, uh, because with an afterburner he should be able to get right up on me and move. Now I finally decide to switch to uh, antimatter, and I finally remember to launch my drone. You can tell I am a little rusty, that's why I'm doing this over overall. So I get my drone out there active and get it fighting, add a little DPS. I switch my ammo, I decide to swing out a little bit, move out to 10 kilometers where I can lower the transversal and hit him better, because he's finally decided he wants to move a little faster, now he's at 1187, 1182, um, however, however the drawback is I might lose warp scram on him, but it'll take a little while. So I'm moving out, now I'm starting to hit, now you can see him starting to connect and I'm connecting very well. Now I decide to go ahead and overheat so I can get some better uh, damage on my guns. So I overheat them guns so I can finish the fight now. And I overheat the warp scrambler in case he tries to get away. At this point he should be thinking about it. He really sh and look, he is trying to get away. He's outside of scram range, but it's too late. As he pulls away, I'm able to continue to get hits and I blow him to pieces. Good fights in local. Thank you, Sedantin. Uh, good fight. I can't pronounce your name very well, but that fight's ended. On to the next one. As you can see, this next fight will be nothing like the Atron fight. I found a Punisher which took off towards a Caldari small faction warfare outpost, and I pursued. Um, a Punisher is much tankier than an Atron. And there it is, he's outside the complex. I decide to go ahead and go for this fight, catch him outside while I can. You gotta catch these things while you can. So I grab him, scram him, and I go to work. Now, as I said, this is gonna be very different because Punishers are perhaps equal in tank, a different style of tank, but equal in tank to the Incursus. They have a lot of buffer tank ability, meaning not active repper so much, but big plates. They can actually tank as much as a small cruiser, but actually maybe even a little more since they have a small signature radius, which means they're much harder to hit. So not only do they have as much effective hit points as a cruiser, a smaller cruiser, they can avoid a lot of hits. But we go to work, and he's, he doesn't do a lot of damage, but as you can see, 14 minutes later, I'm down to no cat boosters left except for one and I finally finish him off. 14 minutes. This ends up being one of the longest frigate fights I ever had. Now, he is a goon. He is from Goon Swarm. And goons shouldn't be in low sec anyway. So I go ahead and kill his pop for good measure and send him back to the null sec rock he came from. It's probably what he wanted anyway. He has no business being in low sec. But, uh, and then just as I kill him, the Tristan shows up. I don't want to fight a Tristan. We drifted far off the acceleration gate, so I don't have to fight the Tristan. I decided to go ahead and warp out, besides the amount of cat boosters. But there's the kill, as you can see. Uh, he had a lot of uh, he had a lot of armor tank, reactive armor hardener, two plates, and this is about what I expected. And he was armed with auto cannons, probably to save cat because auto cannons and other projectile weapons don't take capacitor. So it's a very comparable fit to mine, or as far as tank goes and it was a good fight. Now in the final fight I had met my match. I found a, a pirate driving a Kestrel. Kestrels 
are missile ships or missile frigates, Caldari. Um, they can be quite effective, but it seems like a good match to me. I'm pretty confident with my awesome rep. It's not a nuding ship. I'm not too worried. I have good damage projection. Maybe not as good DPS, but I have good damage projection and good tank. My exile bonus has expired, but I don't care. I lock him up and I go to work. I'm feeling really good about it. Now, still feeling good about it. I'm a little late getting the drone out. Really late getting the drone out. But the incoming damage is real. I need the other repper. Quick, quick, quick. So it gets the other repper going. But he's still out DPSing me big time. And he's cutting into my hull at this point. I don't know how he's able to get this much damage, but I'm not hitting him very well. I'm hitting him. I am hitting him. But his transversal is really high, meaning my turrets aren't going to track. Uh, his rockets will apply every time and hit me. That's the advantage of rockets. And I barely have any hull left, and boom. I just cannot keep up with the DPS. It could be that he had dual webs. That is a popular fit for the Kestrel since they have a lot of mid slots. However, his shields did seem pretty tanky. So not only that, um, his DPS seemed pretty high. In order for this to have been a dual web Kestrel, he would have had a more armor tank and the mid slots, which are shield slots, would have been given up for them to be webs. But I'm not sure exactly how he was fit. He was pretty high damage. He was able to apply. I may have been able to do better with a blaster in Cursus at this point, at this juncture, but, and I may have been able to escape had I known it was going to be this close. However, it was still a good fight. It was another pirate. Pirates usually are good fighters. My conclusion is that a rail and curses can work, but not as well as other ships that seem perfectly made to project damage at what us PvPers call scram kite range, which means kind of close range, but not quite in your face. Rather than using a knife or a machete to fight close quarters, it's more like using a rapier or a short sword to have a chance to keep distance and possibly escape if things go badly and certainly not long range as if using a long sword or a spear. The next round will be that spear, the nimble and wicked looking Imperial Navy Slicer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If I haven't released it already, look for the lightsaber spinning tutorial soon on my new channel, Light Warriors. Until next time, space friends.